Welcome to Vidmark, a podcast to give you the video marketing knowledge to always hit the mark. Let us help build your confidence with video strategy and content creation best practices. Join us weekly for pro tips and guest interviews as we explore the powerful communication tool of video. It's time to boost your business. Let's talk video. Okay, welcome back to the Vidmark podcast. I'm very excited to be joined by joined by Stephanie. This is exciting because Stephanie, this isn't just your first time on the podcast. This is your second time on the on the show, um, which is you're our first guest to do that. I think you came on episode 16. So if everyone who's listening, if you haven't listened to that one, you can still listen to this podcast, but check out that one too to get even more you know backstory about Stephanie. And we were in a totally different time in the world back then. But uh, yeah, excited to have you on the episode. Stephanie, do you want to give people who haven't listened to that episode a little bit about your background and what you've been up to lately? Yeah, thanks, Brian, for having me again. I mean, honestly, I didn't know that I'm the first guest who is in the show for the second time. So it's a great pleasure for me that you invited, invited me again. I mean, yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I think, yeah, last time when we met, I mean, we met in person, right? This is so many things have changed in between. And I think last time on the episode, we talked a lot about my background and what I'm doing as a travel blogger and content creator, because basically I'm a marketing communications professional um, with a passion for travel. And I've been working with um, yeah within the communications and the social media industry and um, creating online and social media content for more than um, 10 years within the travel industry, within the events industry. And yeah, so I love writing, I love photography. And this is the reason why a couple of years ago already, I started my own blog uh, where I share my travel experience and I try to give travel tips. Um, for other people who love to travel to certain areas and I really want to inspire and empower those people to yeah pursue their own travel dreams and this is what I'm doing with my blog and also with my Instagram and I had the chance in the past and still fortunately have to yeah collaborate with great brands out there and tourism boards who support me and I support them by yeah, telling their brand story through my eyes. And especially last year, I also had the chance to yeah, work with some um, agencies and um, organizations, also nonprofit organizations who I consulted um, in social media. So this is basically what I'm doing. Yeah, well, I think that's awesome. And uh, for anyone that hasn't seen your, your Instagram or gone and checked out your website, you produce really fantastic photography written uh, and just travel tips in general so um yeah i'm one of the reasons i wanted to bring you back onto the podcast is because things have changed so much uh you mentioned yeah we we filmed this in person or we recorded it in person i remember that it was a really fun day we had like acai bowls of uh ice cream well i don't know acai if it's actually healthier if you consider it ice cream but uh, <laughs> but that was a, that was a fun day and being able to be do it in person which adds another element which is now here we're doing it via zoom which it's uh you know you're able to see someone clearly but it's not as personal you know you're trying to go through through the camera lens to have that conversation so um where am I going with this? Uh, maybe you can talk about some of the changes. So how have you had to change your work, you know, because of the pandemic? I, you know, I just feel terrible because travel is one of the first things or one of the things that's been hit the hardest because of the, the pandemic and the shutdown. Yeah, definitely. I think also, like you said, like everything changed since we met for the first time and recorded the first episode episode just really everything changed I mean just being able to meet in a cafe in downtown Portland I've never you know I, I haven't done this <laughs> for a year now and it's kind of weird so I think for yeah all of us the the major impact is that everything went virtual and yeah, I think it was only a few weeks um, after we met that the pandemic hit and turned the whole world upside down. So, of course, like for everyone, for me, it also changed uh, that everything is 
going on virtual now. And as you mentioned, um, the travel restrictions, which are still there, really kind of impacted me a lot because as I said, I'm, I'm a travel blogger and I write about traveling. So it's been a roller coaster, I would say, last year. And but honestly, I'm I'm still really happy and grateful. Um, that I had the chance to still explore some of the US and of course the international travel ban is still there which yeah is a topic for me because I'm originally from Germany so I haven't seen my family and friends for two years now because yeah this was the last time when I've been in Germany back home and this is actually yeah before I moved to Portland um, I've been living in Shanghai in China before that together with my husband and before we moved to Portland we went back home meet family and friends and then all the moving and everything started and this is the last time when we've been home and yeah the international travel restrictions are still there so it's kind of yeah, it's a weird situation because I think this is something especially our generation is not used to and especially like people like us growing up in the US or in Europe we are not really used to having restrictions like that you know we were able like all our lives there sky was the limit I mean of course there are other um, points you need to calculate in but not everyone has to has the chance to travel all the time but just the opportunity to fly to your home country, fly to another country. It's it's not possible at the moment. And of course, this impacts me and yeah, my family and friends. But on the other hand, um, yeah, I must admit that I still call myself pretty lucky to be in the US right now and be in that beautiful state of Oregon and live in Portland because yeah, the city and the state um, offered me so many opportunities um, even last year after you know some the first restrictions got lifted and during summer we were all a little bit more able to travel especially if you are into outdoors and hiking and camping then I think last year offered a lot of opportunities especially here in the U.S. because the country is so wide and you can just go with your car and, you know, travel into the outback basically and be on your own and really practice social distancing. So you can actually travel safely and responsibly. And yeah, this is something I really enjoyed doing last year and I'm, I'm still enjoy doing and really hope that will, I will yeah, be able to see some more places in the US this year. Yeah. Stephanie, I really appreciate you kind of yeah, bringing, putting the silver lining around things that there, there are still some like fortunate things in our own backyard, but I'm yeah, really sorry. That sucks. that you're not able to go see your family, not able to go back home and enjoy, you know, not home, but go back to Germany and, and see some friends and family and, and enjoy some of those things. So it's like, uh, yeah, I really feel sorry or I feel bad about the whole situation. Like it, it's a, a really big bummer, but, um, you know, talking about things that we haven't I'm stumbling on my words here but kind of talking about things in our own backyard or things that are right here local you've done a, a really good job of still going out and exploring yeah like you mentioned camping or driving to some of these areas do you want to talk about that experience because uh yeah I'm I'm jealous or I, I almost kicked myself there's like some of the best wonders in uh the u.s right here in, in oregon and you've gone out to like the multnomah falls and um you know, it looks like lake tahoe and grand tetons just name a few yeah i mean honestly now looking back to 2020 which is kind of known worldwide as the year with the most restrictions in traveling i feel pretty amazed that i've been able to see so many places and the fact is just that I'm living here and I don't have to step into an airplane, like fly here from Europe, but I'm just here. I only have to go into my car and then I, I'm able to experience all these great places. And yeah, Grand Tetons, Wyoming um, with Yellowstone National Park has definitely been a really, really highlight of last year because it's such a special place on earth and the scenery and 
the wildlife there. It was just so amazing. Um, yeah, I saw a grizzly bear for the first time in my life. And I, you know, I didn't expect that at all. I mean, I went to Yellowstone and I was hoping to see some bisons. And we saw some bisons, actually a lot of bisons, and there was this bear and eating an elk. I mean, honestly, this is, was just such a, yeah, such a highlight and such a, yeah, coincidence that we've been there exactly at the right timing. And yeah, it was just such a great experience to, to see a bear in the wild, a grizzly bear. And this is something I think I will never forget in my life. So yeah, last year, honestly, for me, I mean, there have been ups and downs totally, but um, like travel wise, I really can say that I had a lot of great experiences and it's not always about traveling like thousands of miles. I mean, Grand Tetons and Yellowstone is quite a bit of a drive, but as you mentioned, like Magnoma Falls, I just went there recently honestly for the first time because I have the feeling like it's always packed and you can only go during the week because on weekends it's it's still packed with people but um, after we had this snowstorm here in Portland which is also only happening yeah not happening often I would say and I wanted to see the falls and I think it's like just having the opportunity to drive out into the gorge for only 30 minutes and see such a great waterfall covered in snow which you will only see really rarely I think yeah it was just a it's just I you know this is one of the reasons why I, why I love living in Oregon and in Portland because it gives me so many opportunities like driving far but also like just going into the Columbia River Gorge, go hiking, see waterfalls. And even in Portland, there are so many great hikes you can do. So if you're really into the outdoors, then this is the place to be. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I've been to a handful of places around the world and it's nice to have you know, a place like Portland where you can just go to the mountains or you can go, go be at the coast. You have all that variety of, of different things that you can experience. Um, maybe you can walk people through like what it was like that, you know, when the, the pandemic first happened, did you change uh, gears? Like how you approached, like, like what were some of the things that were going through your mind? I mean, obviously we had to halt travel, but you know, for you, were, were you like, okay, I'm just going to, you know, see what I can do in the U S like, what were some of the first things that you were going through? Yeah, it's an interesting question because the really first things we went through was like staying at home and not going anywhere. Like for three months, didn't really go out of our neighborhood, only went for a walk in the same park. And I was like, I have to go to a different park at least because I'm getting tired of the same use every day. And it was really an uncertain time because no one really knew back then how everything will develop, how big the impact will be, and in the end, how long this whole thing will take. And in the first weeks, it was like really being cautious and really just doing nothing and waiting for things to get better. And then, yeah, eventually then it was end of May, I think. I think it was, yeah, Memorial Day when it was the first like long weekend in the US here where people started to go out again. And honestly, I've, I haven't even been in the gorge to see some wildflowers. I've been waiting for that like since I've moved here because I knew that there is so many great wildflowers in spring like growing in the gorge. And if you go hiking in spring in the gorge, it's just so beautiful. But we weren't able to go out there and we didn't. I mean, there was this travel restriction and Governor Brown said, don't go, don't leave your area. And this is just something we stick to. And yeah, and it, it felt so relieving to then when everything lifted a little bit to, to go out. And it I remember because it was a it was a bit like, you know, uncertain still because we didn't really know are the campgrounds already open, then you have the possibility um, to do dispersed camping. That means you don't have to 
go to a campground and book a spot. There are certain areas when you, where you can do this first camping. And my husband and I tried to do something like this, but we haven't done this before. So it was like, okay, this is just an experiment. We drive, we go. And if we see this is not working or if we see there are too many people, we just turn around and come back. And we bought a tent. We bought camping gear, which we, you know, we wanted to to do camping and stuff a little bit more. But we felt like this is the only and the safest and the most flexible opportunity for us to go out and experience something when we just take everything we need we just bring everything we bring our own you know we, we have the car we have the tent we can sleep in we bring our camping cooker so we had to get all that equipment and we bring our own food so we really don't have to go somewhere to buy food or get into a restaurant or anything like that and this was an experiment and we tried we we drove to eastern oregon because we thought okay the further we the out we get the better <laughs> and in the end it turned out pretty well because not many people were out i mean there were some day trippers but we found nice camping spots really remote and we just pitched our tent and cooked our eggs in the morning and you know we had our own food so we cooked soup and stuff at home we just brought it and warmed it up and it was so relieving to be honest and back then I felt or I realized how much I really missed that traveling and exploring and you know doing something different back yeah it was just such a it was really mind-blowing because the weeks before we just stayed at home and spent a lot of time like on our patio and starting the barbecue season and stuff like this but it's something different like really going out and see new places explore and we had such a fun time even though you know we didn't meet anyone we just spent the time together but it was so it was new like camping and all that stuff so it we really loved it and Back then, then we, yeah, we started to grow our equipment. And actually, honestly, you don't really need much equipment to do that. You just need some sleeping bags, some sleeping pads and some camping cooker and some, you know, um, um, pots and pans, but not too much, actually. So I think camping, if you want to try it out, I think this is really something you can just try out without you know getting tons of equipment without spending thousands of dollars is this just something everyone who want to tr who wants to try it can try it definitely yeah i mean it's kind of like any hobby you can either you know do very minimal investment just enough to get by or you can yeah go get a giant rv you know winnebago and <laughs> kind of yeah go all out get the nice camping gear but you really yeah you can go to a used store and get just like you know enough to get by and just enjoy it um i i think that's awesome that you guys when did that trip and still finding ways to kind of stretch or get outside your comfort zone it seemed like camping wasn't as much of a comfort zone and so uh i know what you mean like i, I remember when the pandemic like first hit and we were like oh we need to stay inside and at first i think everyone had the mindset of okay like I'll make this, you know, slight adjustment, but things will eventually get better. And then mm -hmm. things like didn't get better. And then everyone's like, okay, well, this is my time to reinvent myself or try to improve um, inside or things are different, but you know, that only kind of lasted so long. So I think that was awesome. What, what you guys did with, you know, going out, exploring and camping. And um, one of the big things I picked up on was just like the newness of it or having a different experience than just the day-to-day -day walking to, the park down the street because um i mean that's how i break up my days like when you think of like some of the days that are like the best in my life you know the top 10 days it was it wasn't just like at home it was because i went out and explored and did yeah. something that really kind of either you know pushed me you know outside my comfort zone or just it was it was a different experience uh than what i'm normally used to so uh good for you guys for doing that you, you think you'll do more camping in the future yes <laughs> definitely yeah totally I mean we really enjoy doing that because it gives it so much flexibility and yeah it, it's 
we are not the big planners, honestly. So we do our holidays or vacation more like, okay, now is a good time to go. Does it fit with work and everything? Yes, it does. Okay, let's go. So this is more like how we we do um, yeah, our trip planning. So for us, it's actually not complicated that, you know, like last year, some time you didn't know do the restrictions get lifted or don't they so it's it's easier to be with your own car and with your own equipment because it gives us a lot of flexibility and we always can go back if it's not working out so it's not that we had yeah some hotels booked or stuff like this where you have to cancel and stuff it's (laughs) just yeah easier so yeah i think we will definitely definitely um go on doing this and also would love to try something like you know going in a camper van or in an rv with we haven't done something like this i think this will definitely be one of the next level things we are trying to do this year that's awesome you kind of uh, jogged my you know thought processes um or just have my own curiosity when you guys do any kind of trip, is there a formal like process that you go through for the planning? Um, do you like map out, you know, different iconic things that you want to capture? I know um, you'll bring your camera along. I imagine you probably did that for the camping trip as well, but uh, how much like kind of forethought goes into it? Yeah, actually a lot. <laughs> I just said that we are not the big planners, but you're right. Actually there goes a lot of, thoughts in it before we do a trip because if you're on your own like driving somewhere sleeping on a campground or doing this post camping there are some things you need to research beforehand because I always feel better if I have a you know an outline of what places I want to see how many miles are between places so you have to kind of plan ahead and sometimes especially in summer you have to make some bookings ahead or at least try because camping was really popular during the last year so a lot of campgrounds like especially in summer were like totally booked out so you have to have some alternatives as well if you don't get a campground because a lot of them are first come first serve and you can't even um, book them in advance so I think in the end, I do a lot of research before. So honestly, my research starts on social media, on Instagram, on Pinterest, where I just look for inspiration and look for places I want to see. And then putting them on a map or on Google Maps, I, I save a lot of spots on Google Maps. And to that helps me to, in the end, put a road trip or an itinerary together because you know, if I do research on Arizona, for example, then I put all the things that I like seeing in a map. And then I realize, okay, there are certain spots together and there are certain spots they located somewhere totally off our (laughs) trip or our, the roads we are planning to drive, then it makes it easier to, to plan an itinerary and to, to plan how much time you want to spend in, at each location. And then, yeah, I use a lot of like apps as well. For example, All Trails is one of the apps I use a lot for hiking because I love it because it's so many yeah people put on their reviews there. So it's not only that you find some facts about the, the hike, but also like people comment and give you some information on the trail conditions, for example. So this is an app I, I use a lot. And there are some camping apps out there, which I use for finding camp spots or stuff like this. So actually, there goes a lot of um, pre-work into a trip planning like this. But as soon as I have this, you know, outline, I'm not really planning every day, like doing this and that and this and that. But I have those places in mind that I would like to see. But sometimes, you know, to get you get to a place and then it, it turns out to look totally different, like you've imagined, or it turns out the trail is closed or something like this. So I always ha- love to have some flexibility in my schedule and... Yeah, I think it's important to have some kind of outline and itinerary, but also, especially when you do camping, let's live for the day because the weather can be different than expected and, you know, can ruin your plans if you have 
planned it too much. And if you just keep it a bit open, then it's easier and more fun in the end. Yeah, I think that's really well put. Um, Cause I was, yeah, I was curious how much goes into it. And I, I like that you kind of yeah, give yourself some flexibility, especially in a place like Oregon where the weather can be a little different or anywhere. To, anywhere matter. in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, that's awesome. So I have a, so when you are, pan, so you like, you plan out a lot of these spots by putting them on like Google maps and then kind of bunch them together. Um, and then are a lot of these ideas, they come from like reading blog posts or do you sometimes get word? Like, do people they talk to, do they tell you, Oh, you need to go like, check out this spot. If you're going there, do you use that as kind of a way to figure out what are some good spots to go to? Yeah. Actually, yeah, a mix of that. I, I read a lot of blog posts myself um, because, yeah, this is where you get the, the great information. People who have already been there and really describing how you get there or what you can expect and stuff like this. Because only scrolling through Instagram, I think it really gives you, sometimes it gives you a wrong impression because everything is so perfect picture perfect um, sometimes on instagram and by reading blog posts you get more details and more information and it makes it easier to yeah get a better feeling what to really expect there and then of course talking to people is is the greatest thing if you meet someone who has been traveling to that area this is the greatest um thing that can happen because people just you know recommend a cafe or a place you should stop on the way which you might have been yeah missing if you're just sticking to your itinerary and not um, looking left or right so sometimes it's also worth like you know stopping somewhere some place um, that doesn't look that attractive in the beginning but maybe someone gave you a hint that there is a nice trail or something or great viewpoint and then just trying to find that spot um, maybe also sometimes leads you somewhere where you haven't been able to to go otherwise that's pretty cool yeah the, kind of like hit an extra bit of info and you get to experience something that isn't as mainstream um do you then, like, if you experience something that isn't as, like, as well known, do you put that into your own blog and, like, kind of reveal it for your listeners or the people that follow you? Yeah, I, I do, because I, I think the most important part or what makes the blog unique or why people read my blog is that they know that they get hands on travel tips and because if I only put in there okay you can like let's say in Death Valley you can do this this and that I mean this information is out there already but people are looking for like details like when is the best time to visit that spot is it sunrise or is it sunset or stuff like this so for example Samuel H. Boardman, this is a really popular spot on the southern coast of Oregon. This is like really rough coastline and it looks really special, like really typical moody Pacific Northwest. And this is a spot a lot of people want to go because there have been pictures on Instagram that all show this certain location. And actually there is a small path leading down to that location. And when I visited this location, I was really like, okay, where's that trail? It, it's not marked or anything. And people found a way to go down there. But then I realized that it's actually not, uh, I mean, there is kind of a trail there, but it's not an officially marked trail. It's on all trails, but it's, it can get a bit dangerous, I would say, because it's quite steep and especially if you go while it's raining or it's really muddy, then I think it can get dangerous because if you fall, you fall deep. And mm. I wanted to blog about that spot as well. And I wrote an article, of course, also telling people how to get there. But I, for me, it was important to put some information about the trail there as well and really tell people, be careful if you go because... What I realize is or what I feel like people see a lot of spots on Instagram and then they want to go and then they find out the location, which is not the hardest part. And then they go and then they climb mountains, they climb cliffs, they 
go on trails where they shouldn't be you know they do stupid stuff and this is something I feel like I also have kind of a responsibility if I share places like this also tell the people think twice before you go especially if you are traveling with children or if you are having your dog with you is this not the safest spot to go down and if it's raining and if it's slippery you might fall and be aware of that and yeah this is for example why I put in my blog post this is the condition of the trail this is how you can find it but don't go if you can or if you find the trail in this or that condition and yeah I'm always trying to to also point those things out because otherwise I feel like yeah people just you know go and then the reality what they expect is something totally different or something that hasn't been written down somewhere and then people just go without knowing what to expect down there yeah I think that's really helpful for people and I I appreciate that you have that kind of mindset or you have the you know empathy for your your viewers or your uh, readers to know like hey this is what to expect so that that's really nice that yeah you're you're very transparent with people um you know, one of the things I find really fascinating is that you've been able to like combine a lot of these different skills together of writing, photography, uh, travel savviness. Do you want to talk about like each, like how you started each of those? Like, have you always been a writer? Like, have you been doing photography since you were really young? Like how did, how did each of those different like passions evolve? Yeah, I think it really evolved over time. And it wasn't that I really, one day I thought I want to have a blog and I, to create a blog, I need to be able to write and to take nice pictures and also need to have some technical understanding. And then I started learning all of this. It just came over the time basically I started the blog honestly because I wanted to showcase my pictures because photography has always been a passion and I I, I think I've been running around with a camera I I can't really remember a time where I haven't been running around with a camera as at least not when I travel somewhere or maybe you know as a kid of course I haven't been traveling or running around with a camera all the time but when I went for my very first trip on my own like really going like back then it was South Africa when I went for a six month um, internship I had my camera with me and not because I wanted to take professional pictures but because I wanted to capture the moment and then I just kept continuing um, yeah loving that photography and I also during studying I did some um, photography courses um, about digital but also about analog um, photography because I was really interested in how the picture actually or what happens on the paper like old school picture um, taking how this works and it really was fascinating for me and I honestly started the blog because I wanted to have a platform where I can showcase my pictures and in the beginning my 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 blog was full of pictures and not really much text was on there and then I figured out that people maybe love looking at pictures, but they want to have some information as well. And back then I, I worked for um, a big tourism company and travel agent, uh, like yeah, travel company back in Germany. And I was responsible for in digital marketing for the company's travel blogs. And this was a time when I basically also started my own blog because the job gave me the opportunity to learn a lot about SEO and how content marketing works. And I tried to implement it into my own passion. And yeah, this is when the blog started becoming what it looks like now. But of course, there has been a lot of like adjustments in between like new templates and new um, yeah, I started blogging um, in English and German um, a couple of years ago when I moved abroad um, because yeah this just gives me the opportunity to reach more people and yeah so it has been yeah a journey I would say <laughs> like the blog and putting everything together and yeah storytelling 
just comes with it. And I think especially like apps like Instagram are something that really put us into that situation where storytelling becomes so easy. If you like doing it, then Instagram or Pinterest is a great platform to do it. And I just love doing it. And, you know, I, I still love photography, but I also developed um, a passion for writing. And I also love to expand my skills in that because writing is not writing. I mean, writing like blog articles that can be found, like writing SEO optimized um, blog articles is something totally different. And I'm honestly, I'm still learning on that as well. Yeah. Oh, I think that's really smart on your part to not just have, um, and I know that was like, I gave you a big, long like question. So very well done answering that. Um, I know it's very fascinating that like you had the passion for photography and then had the, the smarts to like create a blog to like kind of showcase that. I don't know if a lot of photographers go that route. Sometimes they just want the photos to like kind of I don't know, stand for themselves or like they try to go like maybe create a collection or have a gallery. But um, I thought, I think that's really smart. And then writing blog posts and you bring up a really good point. It's different than writing like an essay for school or just writing something kind of fun, but it has a little bit of a strategy behind it with, uh, you talked about SEO. So I'm imagining like kind of some keywords that you find in there and, and place those in there strategically. So that way it ranks a little higher on, on the Google search, but um, I think yeah, that's and, awesome. Yeah, especially also providing the information people are looking for. Because honestly, my very first blog post, it was like a diary from my travels. And now looking back, it's like, okay, who reads this? Who wants to know that I drank coffee in the morning? And I mean, <laughs> still this content is kind of going well sometimes on Instagram and other platforms. But it's more about like really... Or also, it's, this is my goal. It's not like having a platform where I can just write my diary. It's more a platform where I can share my experience and give travel tips to other people. So, yeah, that everyone can get the information and can put itineraries together and things like that. Definitely. Yeah, I would say every single piece of content you put out there has some kind of value in it that's like helping people. It's like I can you can definitely tell you put a lot of thought and effort into every single thing you do. So um Thank it you. definitely <laughs> shows. Yeah. A cactus knows how to survive. It can endure scorching heat, limited rainfall, and defends itself against critters daily. Your business is no different. To survive harsh conditions, it's important to develop deep roots using media content that'll continuously nourish and support your marketing efforts day after day. Tactus Media is here to help you determine a strategy and create media content. Together, let's map out the next sequence of videos, podcasts, and social media to help your business thrive. Work with Tactus Media, media tactics that stick. Ouch! Visit tactusmedia.com to learn more. Okay, so we kind of talked about the different skill sets. Now talking about one of the questions I had, which I think would be one of the challenges in your space is, um, you know, going to a location, like let's use like San Francisco, for example, because I just went there a couple of years ago. There's like thousands of photos of like, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge, but like trying to create something unique and different. Do you have any tips for people? Like when you're going to a common space, how do you give it your own like unique, flair or unique style to it yeah this is a good question because i think we are all really influenced by what we see online especially if we do some research for a place we are planning to go then sometimes i have the impression that i have so many pictures in my mind as well and then sometimes the location in reality reality looks totally different or you go there and realize okay this is filled with people and you you can't even get a clear shot of all that and because people use um, photoshop to to get away the people out of their pictures which i don't do <laughs> by the way um yeah it, it it i think sometimes there is an impression of what is there and the reality is totally different 
So I always, of course, I'm honestly, I'm influenced by that as well. And if I research for a location I'm planning to travel to, of course, I do that research on Instagram and all the platforms and our world is full of pictures, right? So you have these spots in mind and then it often helps to, yeah, to, to turn around the corner or because some, it, it's funny because some places really you get to the places and then people start queuing in line at a certain spot because they want to have or get exactly that picture. And I don't want to say that I haven't ever been queuing <laughs> in my life for getting that picture. But for example, in Taiwan, there is a spot um, on a hill, like on a mountain where you can see um, Taipei 101, um, the big tower. And there is a certain spot and all the people who go up do that trail up that mountain the first thing they do they stay in line and take a picture of themselves and um, with the tower in the background and this was for example one point where i didn't want to stop because i was like really are people just queuing so that in the end everyone gets the same picture and there is so many yeah there are so many different angles to explore and just if you walk around a bit and just don't go to the very first spot or where you see other people queuing just go around a little bit and it opens up so many different angles and perspectives and only because some people are queuing for a certain spot it doesn't mean that this is the only spot there and this is the only perfect picture there yeah, on this mountain, we took a lot of great other pictures, not with me in, in the back or in the um, on the picture and the tower in the back, but like the tower framed um, with leaves and stuff like this. So I think, you know, I, I try um, to, to play around with what I find when I get to a place. Like, for example, if I'm at a place where there are trees or like flowers around, I, I try to frame my pictures with or the, the, the side I want to take a picture of, try to frame this um, with what I find there. Or there sometimes it makes a huge difference if you, you know, you, you always walk around and everything you see is on eye level. And sometimes it makes such a big difference to go down and take the picture from a different perspective. Or, you know, if you have to, the opportunity to climb up a hill and then, take um, the picture from a different angle and I'm trying a lot of these things like not just walking around and taking snapshots but often I, I go to places and I want to spend some time um, there because it opens up more creativity if you have like half an hour to to you know explore a certain spot and then it's fun you know to to put like leaves or flowers into the framing or just lie on the ground and take the pictures from the bottom and it opens up so many different angles and yeah this is what I'm trying to do yeah I really appreciate that I think that was an excellent explanation of uh, I think that'll be helpful for a lot of people out there because um, you know that's a plot you can apply that to you know, beyond just travel, but just anything that you do, what's a different angle, what, thing, what are things that you can play around with? And I think that's, that's pretty funny. I, uh, going to like a common location and seeing a line of people just trying to get the same photo, uh, that's probably, you know, the biggest indicator of, okay, that just like screams tourist in my mind. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I have done this as well. I mean, <laughs> there are some, you know, there are certain spots that, there is a reason why they are so popular and if you decide to go to this spot I think you already have decided that you want to see this spot from this certain perspective and yeah sometimes you know I also do it but I don't do it all the time so always try to find you know something that is reflecting or you know find a puddle to to take the picture from a different perspective so this is actually also more fun than queuing <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think that's awesome and i definitely from, from your work i've seen some 
beautiful like puddle or reflection work and it actually like kind of expands the the image like it doubles it up so rather than just getting the one you have kind of two it creates a, a different effect i always really like taking um like through a window or something that like kind of squares mm -hmm. it up those are always the really fun yeah. ones and I've, I've seen that with some of your work too um maybe you can talk about like the different platforms that you use and how they all work together um it seems like you're Instagram and your blog kind of like reflect each other. Like the blog is sending people to Instagram and the Instagram is sending them to your blog and they kind of get this, uh, you know, adventure experience or they get to learn tips from you. And is that kind of a good understanding? Are there other things that are in play too for you? Yeah, I think like what you said, like Instagram and my blog are my main channels and they reflect each other because I'm always kind of of course, when I post stuff on Instagram, like directing people to my blog, because there they can find more information and a detailed blog post about the location. It, it, you know, it's not always working out like this, that for every picture I post, I do have a blog post, but of course it goes hand in hand. And I always try to to you know talk about my travel experience or my travel tips on all the platforms I use. Um, in addition to that, I use Pinterest also um, as a platform to yeah, reach more people because on Instagram sometimes I have the feeling, of course, you can redirect people from Instagram to your blog, to your website, but especially if you do it in stories or also your feed posts, they kind of go away and they go further down and down and so people are, they have this really short amount of time where they really look at your content and your pictures. And I found um, Pinterest as a kind of better um, platform to redirect people to my blog because they can save the pins and then they can really save it for later and have it in their pin board um, if they want to travel to Oregon, then they have pins um, saved and then as soon as they are starting to plan, they go and then they read through the blog article. So, of course, my, my Instagram reflects um, my blog and but it's not sometimes. Yeah, Instagram is also kind of a different platform because it's a lot about visuals and it's a lot faster than blog posts. You know, if I write a blog post about Grand Canyon, it's still relevant next year and it's still relevant the year after. And on Instagram, everything is a bit more, yeah, fast paced, I would say. But in the end, of course, it it works together. Yeah, no, I think that's really well put. And um, yeah, so I guess Instagram is kind of that news. It's like happening and like, yeah, things can get lost in the shuffle depending on how much content is also being pushed out there. But that's what I noticed is like one of the big things with your blog posts is you'll pin, or not pin, but like put the link to the Instagram post. And I think that helps keep something that even like you mentioned you know grand canyon that's like a timeless piece so you put it in there even though if someone's liking I, i'm sure you find this all the time someone's liking a post from like 2018 or even earlier because maybe they found it on your blog not necessarily by scrolling through instagram yeah and this is the great part about seo and like putting stuff on your blog it lives there and if you manage to like you know, edit it from time to time and put some more information on it, then it will be found next year again when it's relevant or like talking about cherry blossom. Now is the time I wrote a blog post about cherry blossom in Portland last year and it hasn't been relevant for the last nine months, but now it's getting relevant again. And if people look for it, then hopefully they find my blog post. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Everyone, if you're if listening to this, go check out the Cherry Blossom article. I, you, you wrote one that was like the best places to see cherry blossoms in Portland, right? Yeah, I mean, I was totally surprised that there are cherry blossom trees in Portland. This is something that, you know, from Japan or also in China, there was a lot of um, cherry blossom, but like thinking of US places, the only really city that comes to my mind is Washington DC because people have been sharing pictures about cherry blossom. And we have such a great, great spot in Portland. Um, yeah, and there are more spots. Like the one popular spot is, um, I think everyone knows, is on the waterfront. Um, 
where you have the steel bridge and we have this alley of um, cherry trees but there are many more spots in Portland and actually because we have such a green city and everyone is kind of having trees and flowers in their backyard in almost every park some trees and flowers are just um, starting to bloom now so it's actually a great time to go out and explore the city waking up from winter definitely yeah i feel very fortunate i have one in my own backyard so i can see it you know do its thing you know blossom this time of year and yeah like you mentioned it's like kind of short-lived i think they are only in in bloom for like two months i want to say and then yeah the rest no of the even it's... shorter i mean now they are a bit later compared to last year i think it's because of the winter storm we had recently um i think last year they were out like at least two or three weeks earlier and then sometimes they only bloom for like two or three weeks and then as soon as the first rain again hits then they're gone so it's really this short amount of time um where you yeah are able to to capture them yeah that is true yeah the heavy rains they're like a little bit lighter flower so the rain will knock uh -huh. them off yeah well that makes me think of i mean the seasons have to play a little bit of an effect on your work. Do you keep that in mind when you're doing, when you want to go travel to a place? Do you think, oh, I'd rather go see that place in summer versus winter because it's going to have a totally different look and feel to it? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I love to, to travel without like focusing on the peak season because I just, yeah love it when when it's not as many people around so always try to find a good timing when yeah it's a good travel time but still not the most peak season and of course um seasons play a big role for example i i told in the beginning that um we went to yellowstone national park last fall and we decided to go there in fall because winters there are pretty long so summer is the peak season and it's yeah probably the only real time when you can travel to Yellowstone without having all the summer <laughs> vacationers there and yeah still be able to to explore um, with sunshine and not you know having to drive there in winter I think until May it's it's still um winter time there and still really cold especially when you're camping you have to have those things in mind um, when is it possible to really camp when do campgrounds open probably um, yeah some areas are still covered in snow until may so of course it plays a role when deciding where to go and when to go yeah no, i think yeah and that's i'm always curious because yeah to add such a different effect to how the images turn out or like you mentioned even people being there you know you want to go when it's a little less busy um well one of the you know not to bring things back to kind of a you know negative note but uh talking about the pandemic and um you know how have you seen that the world or like you know the marketing world has responded to the the, the crisis um now that we are on yeah one year in the pandemic i would say after some really turbulences in the beginning that the marketing world really responded pretty fast because yeah as we talked about earlier already it's like in the beginning no one really knew what happens how the impact will be how long this will all take but i think after a few weeks, everyone realized that the pandemic will not just go away only because it's getting warmer outside. <laughs> so, and this I think was the time when, yeah, the marketing world um, absolutely responded to it. I mean, there were so many um, platforms like popping up and especially Zoom, what we are also using now, it's, this is the app or the, yeah, um, tool that everyone uses even if it's talking to your family or friends back home if you want to get um, a bunch of people together if it's at work or if it's um, for having like Friday quiz nights um, what I remember we did in the beginning of the pandemic Zoom was everywhere and I think this is just a company yeah that blew up somehow and 
there are other platforms as well. Like I think podcasts is one of those 2020 marketing tools. It honestly, it feels like everyone has a podcast now, <laughs> even though the whole podcast thing or podcast itself isn't a really new thing. Podcasts have been around for years, but I feel like in 2020, it boomed i mean really there are so many podcasts out there about so many topics and clubhouse is another app that just recently popped up um, which is another yeah example how marketing world responded to the pandemic because i think it didn't take long until we realized that we need to find ways to connect with each other even though we can't be connected in person even though we can't travel, we can't see each other, life somehow must go on. And I think, um, yeah, there are a lot of um, opportunities that came with that and marketing responded to that. Also, another example I would say is like, I benefited from it as well. Like a lot of virtual conferences or tutorials or e-learning tools popped up last year and a lot of them were for free. So it was from one day to the other, it was possible to attend a marketing conference, let's say somewhere else on the world without even traveling to it because it was opened up for the virtual space. And oftentimes also tutorials or like, as I said, webinars or e-learning tools were offered for free. And I think yeah, a lot of businesses use these tools to attract people and create awareness of their products by providing like free stuff so that people kind of, yeah, use this and then also, you know, buy that product or get um, the awareness of a certain product or a certain platform or whatever it is. And yeah, I think in the end, um, yeah, marketing really um, found a way to to respond to everything. And as we see, like digital or online shopping is growing. Of course, people had to respond because no one was able to to go into shops. So people had to find ways how to sell their products online. Definitely. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, thanks for kind of giving that whole like synopsis of how things have radically changed and yeah, I was like just thinking about it the other day. Like, I don't know if you remember the platform Skype was like the yeah. go-to. Everyone's like, "Oh, Skype me!" It. <laughs> and it's yeah, the like the iconic little um, soundtrack that plays when you're about to connect with somebody. Um, but then, yeah, I think if this pandemic would have happened ten years earlier, I think Skype's been around since like mid two thousands. I want to say I was using it, you know, back when I was in you know grade school. I want to say. Um, but if that would have, if the pandemic would have happened 10 years earlier, they probably would have been the leading, yeah. you know, video conferencing. Um, I'm a little more partial to zoom. Now I've enjoyed some of their functionality and features, but uh, yeah, they were definitely the ones that won out. And I didn't even think about that with like free, a lot of the things, a lot of things that we've all benefited is all of these conferences that would have cost, you know, quite a bit of money to go see, see in person they've now become free online yeah. which is a uh, which is a huge benefit uh you know who doesn't like free uh, <laughs> when it comes to stuff you know hence this podcast is free for people that want to just get some information <laughs> and knowledge um kind of skipping ahead here in our like outline um what are some of the trends that you see you know, since we're already like kind of on this topic um you know as people come out of the pandemic um you know where do you, where do you see things going um, I think it, it yeah, definitely has a relation to um, the virtual world and how this um, grew. I think this is a trend that we will stick to, like the virtual world. I think we will stick to a lot of benefits which comes with it, like remote work or having video conferences instead, like inviting thousands of people to come to one place. And um, I think companies also realize that it's also cheaper for them <laughs> if we all do like virtual. And, you know, it's, it's, I think there are a lot of benefits that will stay with us, especially for businesses and marketing side. 
I think another trend that also developed during last year is the trend of self-care and healthy living and healthy yeah, stuff people do because it has to do with that overstimulation. You know, from one day to the other, we had so many opportunities and sometimes I we felt overwhelmed before the pandemic already and now even more like podcasts, conferences, everything you could just do online and even attend meetings and stuff in different time zones. So actually, honestly, in the beginning, I thought, okay, we all should have more time now because nobody needs to go to work. <laughs> you don't have to go tra get dressed in the morning. You, you don't have to commute. You know, you don't lose time in between traveling somewhere. You can, everything you can do from your from your screen and from your laptop. And it turned out that I feel like I don't have more time. I, I feel like I pack more into my day than before because there is more out there what I can use and what I can do and what I can join. And so I think this is one of the reasons why, yeah, the topic like self-care also became a trend and um, that people start to thinking about their consumption of things and try to step back a little and calm down and not getting distracted from our crazy world around us and yeah talking about travel I also think a trend that already has come up due to the pandemic and will um, stay with us is the the trend or it's not a trend but uh, the topic of safe and responsible travel because I think yeah this is really important to everyone right now I mean all the companies all the hotels all the airlines they all want to open up again and there's a huge interest in the economy to open up but on the other hand there is also huge responsibility all these companies have and people also you know have more awareness I would say about travel safety and where to go how to travel and I think this will be a trend yeah within the travel industry that people hopefully also think about more what they are doing where they go and do a bit more of slow travel and explore a bit more about what's in their own backyards instead of chatting the world every year and you know creating so many yeah yeah, all those extra things. No, you bring up some good points where it's like, yeah, everyone was go, 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 already like overwhelmed. And then it's like, it caused us to like pump the brakes, figure out maybe what are the priorities in life. And then, um, yeah, bringing up like, you know, health, mental wellness, also being a part of yeah. that. And like, how do you make every day not seem like the same, you know, still uh, the gyms are shut down. How can you still remain healthy and um and then yeah on the other same token you can almost take that to a whole different extreme where you can overwhelm yourself with all the different conferences online and open up a thousand different tabs and be kind of inundated with all of this so like finding that balance and um i don't know yeah self-care and maybe taking a break from technology and all of that so yeah really good points um this has been a fun really fun interview stephanie we've gone through a bunch of different topics and um i really appreciate how prepared you are on my end with like all the notes it made my job really easy um what are you know just really quickly um you know what's one thing that businesses well i think we've kind of already talked about it like what's one thing that businesses can do to improve but do you do you want to speak to that for a moment before kind of starting to wrap things up yeah, I think one of the most important part is that businesses, I think, need to be creative and innovative. I think pandemic showed us that this is the key to, you know, make your business work and continue to, to work because, yeah, we have to kind of find creative ways, even though a pandemic hits and everything is changed and everything is upside down. Um, there are always kind of ways to make things work and I think as long as companies or brands um, be creative and be innovative um, there's always a yeah a, a chance that they yeah reach their goals 
I have a, a small example um, for that before we wrap up. Um, like last year when everything really was like restricted and no one was able to go somewhere, um, a brand or a tourism board who I've been working with um, in the past already reached out to me and it was Bavaria Tourism. And because in Germany also no one was really like able to, to go out, even not go out to, to the forest or to 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 a lake or go on a hike on a trail and so they had the idea um, to create a a virtual journey through Bavaria and back then Instagram launched the new feature it was like um, you were then also able to to have this video conference over Instagram I think the feature didn't really get that popular but anyways it was new back then and they wanted to use that feature to um, bring together some um, people who have been traveling Bavaria in the past and bring them together on Instagram and share uh, moments of their travel memories and then from that content create a journey a virtual journey which they then cut and edited and then put on Instagram TV on their channel so people were able to you know go on a journey through Bavaria and it was such a fun and interesting collaboration because I was in Portland <laughs> all the other people who joined this conversation it was for um, other people I some of them I knew before and some of them I've never met before and we were just put together and you know talking over Instagram seeing each other only on the screen and then sharing um, our memories um, through our Instagram pictures we had shared of Bavaria before and it was such a fun journey for us because yeah, we, we shared so many fun stories together and we I think we talked for more than an hour <laughs> and they in the end had to cut two Instagram um, TV um, videos because they couldn't fit everything into one. <laughs> and it was so much fun and it, I think it was a great collaboration and also fun way to watch for their followers because it was some way of creativity like how can we get the people who are really tired of not being able to go out and, you know, motivate them a little bit and get some positive thoughts into yeah, their heads and show them Bavaria through Instagram. Wow. That's really cool. That, that was one of the questions I was going to ask. Like, are you kind of repurposing some of the old travel things? And so that seems like definitely one of those examples where yeah. you guys were able to kind of relive those moments. And I haven't been, Oh, well, I guess, no, I haven't really been to Bavaria, uh, even though I've been to North and Southern Germany, but I've only heard that it's just beautiful countryside and um, yeah, just a fantastic spot. So that's, that's cool that you guys were able to kind of collaborate virtually and, and talk through some of those and they made two videos out of it. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so I guess, you know, before wrapping things up, Stephanie, maybe you can tell like, I know you also do uh, creative content work for brands and companies. So um, maybe you could talk about that aspect. Uh, what are the, you know, the different you know, ways that you can help companies? And then the other aspect is, uh, you know, who are the people that should follow you on, on social platforms? <laughs> um, I start with the last question because I have it in here now. Um, yeah. Everyone who is interested in, in exploring and, traveling not on the US because I have been traveling um, Asia and um, Europe and so there is a lot of content on my blog but yeah people who really um, try to explore their surroundings like people for example who live in Oregon follow me because you will find a lot of um, great um, spots um, that you can um, explore in Oregon without traveling that far and also, um, if you're interested in travel, not only travel tips, but also like mobile photography tips, this is something I'm not doing that much at the moment, but this is something that I'm planning to open up on my channels as well, like really also sharing tips how to do great mobile photography, because this is often one thing that people yeah ask me how to create that great content and the answer is you don't have to have a professional equipment and the most expensive camera and 20 lenses and stuff like this all the content I'm creating on my Instagram is with my mobile phone and 
there are a few drone shots there as well but it just shows that you don't have to have that big equipment and there are just easy ways how to level up your photography we talked a bit um, about that earlier like taking different perspectives um, there are a lot of apps out there and i'm i'm also yeah i'm planning to to in to put also yeah to put this a bit into focus on my instagram channel as well to really give people tips about traveling but also how they can create content like this that's awesome. And then, so what was the first question? and then the first question, yeah, I think that's really helpful for anyone that wants to learn more about you and kind of get their own travel bug going or just have like better sense of like how to travel, which you've already talked about in this podcast. But and then the other one is uh, you also are a content creator um, or a, uh, you know, marketing professional that's able to help elevate brands and, um, you know, create you know, photography images for them, do written pieces for them as well. I'll let you explain. Maybe you can, what are, what are some of the th ways that you can help companies out? Um, yeah, I, I, of course, I do a lot of like showing the brand's story through my eyes. And of course, it works great with travel brands because this is the main focus that I'm been, I'm yeah doing on my channel. So I, work a lot with like tourism boards or um, hotels or like travel brands who you know um, do what I love doing like sell travels and it's always a fun and passion of me to to collaborate with those brands but what I'm also doing is um, like I consult um, smaller organizations for example who want to level up their social media so last year I've been able to consult some environmental um, organizations or yeah organizations also non-profit organizations who focus on sustainability and environmental issues um, I think this is a trend that is getting bigger and bigger and there are a lot of great companies out there who do a lot of great work and sometimes they don't really have that power to showcase this and they don't have the marketing people in their companies. So what I do as a freelancer is like consult people and organizations, um, how they can level up um, their social media um, accounts and yeah, working for, for smaller brands in the Portland area as well. So this is something I am always looking to do, looking forward to do and would love to get some more, um, yeah, brands come in and get the chance to work with some more, um, yeah, brands and smaller companies. Definitely. You guys heard it. So if you need photos or uh, written or just want to rethink the messaging and how your brand is perceived, definitely reach out to Stephanie. She can help you with those. Um, yeah, so people can go to your website uh, to, to book with you, which is smilefortravel.de slash en in English, right? Right. <laughs> and then on LinkedIn, they can follow you. You have Instagram, Pinterest, like we mentioned. Um, one of my kind of you know last closing questions is, so when things do open back up again, what's like the first uh, travel thing that you have? Like where, where's the first place you want to go internationally? Yeah, I think this is my home country. This answer must be clear. I really need to <laughs> visit family and friends back home after yeah two years now. It's definitely the time um, to go back to Germany and just, you know, not really do travel as the normal travel, but travel around the country and meet as many friends um, as possible and spend time with them and the family. Yeah. This is definitely the one thing that I will be doing. Yeah. Well, I hope that happens sooner than later. Um, but yeah, that would definitely sounds nice. Uh, you know, who, everyone knows we need kind of that, you know, rejuvenation of being around those people that, you know, we grew up with or that you've shared experiences with. So hopefully that happens sooner than later here in the new year in 2021. Yeah. Fingers yeah. crossed. <laughs> 
Well, I want to say a big thank you to you, Stephanie. Um, everyone that's tuning in, the links will be in the show notes. So you'll be able to check out Stephanie's website. And um, I also will throw in the Cherry Blossom blog post because I think that's relevant to the Portland listeners here. Very exciting. Um, but I want to just say thank you for all the awesome work that you do and in, um, inspiring people. Like you're out there doing work that's helping people, motivating them and, you know, I can only imagine a world where everyone has a little bit of travel in their background, how much like more empathy people would have for others. And I don't know, just people would be more culturally aware uh, through, through travel. So thank you so much for everything you do. And thank you for coming onto the podcast, Stephanie. This has been awesome. Thank you so much, Brian. It was again, so much fun and I don't know how long we talk, but um, yeah, definitely spend some time now on Zoom. And really appreciate that you invited me for the second time. Definitely. Yeah, I think we went about an hour and a half. So this has been Whoa. awesome. Almost, <laughs> just almost an hour and a half. So, so it's been really fun. All right, Stephanie, until next time. And Thank uh, all, you. Yeah, and everyone tuning in, remember to make sure that your videos are always hitting the mark. Till next time. Bye, everybody. See you next time. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Vidmark, a place for all your video marketing needs. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite platform and tune in every Thursday morning on either iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and more. For a behind the scenes look and some bonus tips, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Until next time, good luck with your video marketing efforts. And remember, always hit the mark.